What's up guys? So as promised, here are some of the links that I found on YouTube which helped me to pass this part 107 test for the FAA. Now, some of these links aren't as important, but the first one is the main one that I think that I, I used um, to pretty much get the grasp of everything was Tony Northrup's video. He went all out sharing all his information as far as what he knows, what what he encountered in the test. So listening to his words, listening to how he broke it all down really helped me to grasp, you know, the questions and understanding airspace and, um, you know, the different terminology, AGL, MSL, you know, reading the different maps and the, the airspace areas and, you know, knowing where to fly, height limits, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, I would recommend his uh, video to be the main one you guys look at. Uh, I probably watch his video probably about, um, at least 10 times and there it's over an hour long, but I did that so that every time I came back, came back to the video, every time he would put a question up, I would be able to answer that question. Um, uh, but not just answer it because I remembered it, but answer it because I knew exactly how to answer it, understanding what the question is saying, what it's asking, what the airspace is about, numbers, latitude, longitude, um, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, he breaks this whole thing down. I, I think the reason why I passed was primarily because of his video. Um, after that, there was a bunch of other videos that I found online um, that there were practice questions that allowed me to take take a test with a group of other people. Um, obviously, the video is pre-recorded, but I was able to answer the question and then they'd give you the answer and then they would explain the answer so they'll tell you they wouldn't just give you the answer they'll kind of let you know like the reason why it's this and why it wouldn't be these other uh, answers another video that came in really handy towards the end of my learning was through a guy named Bill Nichols I'll have the video for that as well but he does a little bit of um, giving out some tips on how he retained some of this stuff uh, like for instance you know, class B, C, D, E, G. Uh, he kind of breaks down like how he was able to understand the color that goes associated with each of those airspaces and which ones you can and can't fly in because it'll go from like a solid blue to a uh, solid magenta to a dash blue to a dash magenta. So you need to know what color represents what airspace and vice versa. So um, I felt his video really helped me to kind of have those tips in my mind uh, that I can be able to remember when I'm at the test. And I actually did. I, I think there was a lot of questions that had to do with airspace that because of his video, it was, a, it was actually, I was able to pass that part of it because um, it really made it easy for me to realize, okay, that's, I can see that's class C, that's class D, um, and so on and so forth. And then some of these other links that I have on here are just videos that I found online where they would pretty much have a discussion they'd ask questions and then they would have people answer them but they give you an opportunity to answer them yourself um, so you can just see if you are getting these questions right or wrong um, and after that they'll pretty much just give you the answer and explain as to why this question was asked and why does this answer go with that and break it down because you guys really need to understand I think not just how to answer these questions but the reason behind it because you know moving forward I think if we are going to be doing this commercially, we do need to have that knowledge in our mind of the airspace, of where to fly, regulations, you know, all that stuff so that way we can operate uh, correctly and also, you know, not have to worry about anybody coming at our door and knocking and telling us, you know, trying to sue us or whatever. I, I want to follow these rules and I just want to make my money. Simple as that. And the last thing I have on here is a link to 3DR Robotics Practice Test. Now, they have about 100 questions, and you can um, take the test in 10 question increments, but they're really good questions, and I swear, I think some of these questions were on my test. So take the test um, there, the practice test, you can take them, there's no signing up or anything, you just take it at your pleasure, answer the questions, and you hit submit, and it'll tell you right then and there um, which questions you got right, which questions you got wrong. They don't really break down the reason why uh, the question was wrong or whatnot, but at least I'll tell you, um, that was a really good way for me to judge myself if I was ready for the test. Once I kind of went through those 100 questions and I realized 
out of every 10 questions, I was missing maybe one or two at the most. I felt confident enough to like, all right, let me go ahead and call up the FAA, give them $150 and take this test. And that's what I did. You know, I think I studied for about two weeks. And uh, after those two weeks, um, I wasn't really learning more. So I figured, you know what, um, that's pretty much it. I think I'm ready for the test. And, and on Friday, I took it. I was there for about an hour. Well, the test was two hours, but I stayed for about an hour and 40 minutes. That's how long it took me to do the test. I was taking my time. And then the last 15 minutes, um, I just went back through all the questions and uh, kind of just made sure my answers were correct. I ended up changing some of them, which I'm glad I did, because you'll realize going through the test, you might come back to a question and be like, oh, you know what, this qu this qu question they're as asking uh, uh, actually gives you the answers for the a previous question, so it's kind of funny. Um, and that's it. I took my test. I passed. I think I missed about 11 questions and I got a 82%, which was good enough for me to get my uh, license. And that's it. So now I'm going to continue with the process with the FAA. I got to get uh, register everything and then um, I'll be able to fly my drone.